they go doing me now. I'm still a talk of the town. Running the scissors, I'm hooking them down. We turn the spots in the frowns. We can't hop out, then we clearing the crowd. And let them know who we got in the building today. It's P O P E. Can nobody do it better? Kev the Pope was good. Oh, wow. What an intro. Hey, Kev. Um, so, we are going to start this off to honor Black History Month mm -hmm. and 50 years of hip hop with a little hip hop trivia. All right. You ready? All right, cool, cool. All right. Name this rapper from Compton who was at one time signed to G Unit Records. The, the game. Mm hmm. Which dynamic female rap duo share names with seasonings that you could find in every kitchen? Salt and Pepper. Mm hmm. Whose debut album was Illmatic? Nas. In 1994, Biggie Smalls married which R&B artist? Faye Evans. Which artist was the first to go viral on YouTube? Soulja Boy. He was the first to do everything, <laughs> <laughs> according to him. In 2017 of July, hip-hop surpassed which genre of music to be the most listened to in the U.S.? Um, is it, is it uh, rock? Yeah, it is. Rock and roll. Word, word. The album Beware of Zog was released by which artist? Snoop Dogg. No, it wasn't. Uh, it wasn't Snoop Dogg? Try again. Uh, you said Beware of Dog? Mm-hmm. DMX. Nope. No? <laughs> Try again. Bow -wow? Yeah, it was Bow Wow. <laughs> yeah, I forgot, I forgot it was Bow Wow. Bow -wow. Let's put some respect on Bow Wow name. When I think of Bow Wow, I think of the do-rags now. Like, cause he, he's a face. He's, he's a, nah, he's a yeah, he is the face on the dude. I be seeing him in a beauty spa. Yeah, yeah, so not, but I let's not forget, that. little Bow Wow. Yeah. You just don't know he. That's crazy. Yeah, he he had me in a chokehold there in my early childhood years. Um, yeah. the album Stankonia was released by which hip hop group? Stankonia. That's a that's a big hint group. Outcast. Yeah, wow. Okay, yeah. You did that. Yeah, I, I fuck with Andre 3000, that's why. Facts. Which rapper is named after the head of a Catholic church and has amassed over 1 million total views on YouTube? Head of the Catholic church? Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I don't know that one. You don't know that one? Nah, you don't have to tell me that one. It's crazy because it's you, but... Okay. I was, I was thinking, about, I was about to say Pope, too, I, but. <laughs> I, 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 okay, I, you got all of the right, except for the one that was about you. That Copy. was about me for real? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was, but dang, you, you wasn't picking up what I was putting down, so that's cool. Let's get right into it, though. Let's yeah. talk about it. Where are you from? Uh, I'm from Brownsville, Brooklyn. Uh, okay. Born and raised. Um, I'm the first American born out of my family. Everybody's from Georgetown, Guyana, mm. like Caribbean country next to Brazil mm -hmm. and Venezuela and stuff mm -hmm. like that. So it's yeah. in South America, y'all, because I know yeah. a lot of people, they don't really know that Guyana is a part of yeah. South America, even though it is considered a Caribbean country. Mm -hmm. So how is it? How is that, though, being a firstborn um, American in your family? I would say it was a lot of pressure growing up because it's like, it was like... Uh, I was the first to do everything, you know mm -hmm, what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I was the first to, like, play football, because I used to play football. Mm -hmm. First to, uh, you know, be valedictorian in my family. Oh, that's you know, right. First to pass up on college and stuff like that. Mm. Um, first to, like, do music. Because especially, like, music, you know, nobody really believed in me. Yeah. Especially coming from a Caribbean household and stuff like that. Nobody, right. like, actually pursued music. It was just work, 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 work. Right. So, and college and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So, it was, it was pressure. And that's what I was going to ask you about, too, because I know that especially um, the children of immigrants when they're first generation, there yeah. is a lot of pressure to go into a field that their parents determine or mm -hmm. deem to be more like lucrative or successful, yeah. like getting into being a doctor, a lawyer, whatever like that. So how was that um, wanting to be, how long did you know that you wanted to make music? Since a kid, like, not even, I wouldn't even say since, like, an adolescent, like, very, very young. Okay. Because I grew up around it. Like, my parents is both rosters. Mm -hmm. So, I grew up around, like, a lot of, like, um, reggae and culture music. Mm -hmm. Like, a lot of Sizzler, Garnick Soap, Peter Tosh, um, Benny Man. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, is that the kind of music that you were making back then? 
or no nah, that's the type of music i was dancing to though okay you was dancing to yeah, it so uh, growing up i used to do a lot of like you know what they call drill dancing now we used to call shots of dancing back in the oh day. no they still call it that yeah I, it was like clubs like sea breeze and the jumble oh and yeah like i remember I those them day raves and, and all like of that, that. Yeah. wait hold on so People consider shots of dancing to be getting the same as getting thirty. I mean, you, when we doing this and and we, you know, because I feel like it's like a clear that. difference. If you feel like it's the same thing, please, you need a culture check, not you. Nah, Just I to mean, the people out there who think so, because I think that there's a clear difference. But there are, there are, you know, with dancing, there are all, always yeah. like loopholes, and they always intertwine. Like some people come um, compare getting thirty to voguing too. So. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so little segue, but, um, so at what point did you know that you wanted to start making like hip hop um, rap music? Always. Cause like, even when I was like playing football, I was making music mm -hmm. and then on top of that, um, uh, one of my best friends in high school mm -hmm. was, uh, his brother was a rapper, like Troy Ave. I don't know if you know Troy Oh, Ave. of course I know who Troy so Ave is. So his little brother was my best friend in high school. So mm -hmm. from there, that just motivated me even more. Like, yo, I could do this music shit. Okay. Um, also like. I had scholarships to go to college and stuff, but it just, I just fell out of love with football. Mm. and just fell in love with music because um, I had Sean Price living in my building also. Mm -hmm. So I used to hang out with him. And um, I, it really hit me when uh, Jav, like my homie Jav, mm -hmm. he came to my crib one summer and um, I had a shorty there. You know what I'm saying? And Jav was, Jav was just like, yo, you know, I'm trying to make music. Mm -hmm. But I was so like distracted by the shorty, you know what I'm saying? And then the following summer, me and Jav linked up back again. And um, I went to B&H and I bought a whole recording set. Uh -huh. And we recorded that whole entire summer. Not you letting like, yeah, one of the ladies uh, halt the progress. Nah, she was really a distraction. Like, you feel yeah. Me? Like, like, mm. But that's also something that comes with age. Because at the time, yeah. you probably didn't realize how much of a distraction she probably yeah. was. Now, you know, you could focus up. Um, So... What did like those first those early years of you making music look like? Um, was it a lot of trial and error? Did you automatically yeah a lot of trial know? and error? Um, a lot of like I don't know because it was a lot of trial and error, but it was it was it was needed though. You know what I'm saying like mm -hmm. it was needed. I needed to meet certain people to know like all right, not to mess to look what to look out for in the future. You know mm. what I'm saying. Okay. I needed to get played a few times by certain people, you know what I'm saying, to to know, like, all right, mm -hmm. this ain't going to happen again or whatever. So what was something, like, or one experience that you had that kind of, like, shaped the way that you look at the industry? Like, one of those moments oh, that um, you feel like. We was working with an engineer at the studio. What was the studio we was working at? Uh, was it Flux Studio? No. We started working at a studio in a city called Funkadelic, right? Okay. Then we went to this other studio on, like, Avenue A and First Street in Manhattan. Okay. And he was, I'm not even going to say homie name, but we was working <laughs> with this engineer, and every, you know, he was, we was going to the studio consistently, all the time, spending money, you know, crazy. Mm hmm You know, recording, 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 and he's saying, you know, he's mixing and mastering our music, but this is, we, you know, we never been to a real studio. This is our first time actually being there. Right. So, when I, when I stopped going to him and went to a different studio, Red Room Studio in Park Slope, which is not open no more. Mm -hmm. You know, I um, linked up with my homie Maddox. Okay. And Maddox told me, like, yo, what is this? Like, you say you recorded at a professional studio? It sound like you recorded in your house. Oh, shit. This shit don't sound <laughs> good. And I'm like, what you mean it don't sound good? Like, this shit sounds great to me. He's like, nah, man, this ain't even mixed. This is this is horrible. Dang. So you know he took saying? y'all for y'all paper. Yeah. He, he and then after that, I was like, yo, this is a dub. Like, you feel me? I'm I'm on this shit now. Like, right. You know yeah. Dang. I feel like that probably happened. I wonder, I don't know. Like, I wonder if that still happens now. I feel like one thing is that people are very open with their experiences now. Yeah. And I don't know if there are engineers that would be able to get away with doing that um, these days. I mean, like, if you if you now getting it, like, you now getting in, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Because the thing is, like, when you're younger, it's easy to get, it's easy, like, to be manipulated and stuff like that. Mm hmm so, and especially if you don't really know, like, about the music business and stuff like mm -hmm. that, because it's really a business, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like, forget all the music and all that. It's really a business at the end of the day. Right. So, if you don't know, like, your business and what's going on, like, you'll get played all the time. Because even people who are in the industry now who's been in the music business, they'll come out later on and be like, yo, I signed a band contract. Oh, yeah. Such and such, da, 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 you know what I'm saying? 
And I'm a I'm a very fundamental ass nigga. I graduated, you know, Valley Victorian. I I you know I know mm-hmm. how to read. Mm-hmm. So I be reading <laughs> I be reading shit like crazy. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, you ain't gonna play me. You know what I'm saying? Right. And I think it's also good that you're tuned into the business side yeah. also because there's so much more to it than just making music. Yeah, as yeah. much as you know, as an artist, you want to focus on your craft. You do also have to make sure yeah. that people not trying to get over on you yeah. while you're making these deals. And that's why like. I'm stand independent. You know, that was my whole, mo- like, my whole thing from the jump. Like, mm-hmm. stand independent, you know what I'm saying? Always? Yeah, always. Like, I don't care what type of deal it is. Because it's like, this is this is me right here. This is this is something that I own. You know what I'm saying? As a black man, I'm owning something, you know, mm-hmm. of my own. And, uh, you know, my masters and everything. And mm-hmm. I'm recouping, like, everything that I'm putting out, I'm recouping back. You know, if it's not mm-hmm. now, in a couple months or in a couple years. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like, why should I give away something that's opening so many doors for me and, mm. you know, like, helping my family out? My mom's retired off of this music stuff. You know what I'm saying? Like, Oh, wow. That's really you dope. Know, I'm able to Shout travel to the world that. off of this music stuff. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. I'm able to help my friends and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So... Why, why should I give it away? I understand what you're saying completely. I think that if you have the means to do it and if it's working for you, yeah. you no, know, if it's not broken, why well, fix it? Right. Um, but I do know that also as an independent artist that doesn't have like as many means or isn't seeing those results right away, sometimes they may be more inclined nah, to get nah, into those situations. Because Rome wasn't built in a day. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. It takes time. I've seen, I seen people, like, it's, 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 you know, it's, it's people that play, oh, I almost gave up. Bro, I never thought about giving up. Like, this is, anytime I put, like, my mind to something, that's what it is. You know what I'm saying? I'm a mm. type of stand on it type of nigga. You know what I'm saying? So, what motivates you? If you never have that feeling, like, what is it that keeps you going? Me. Like, just me. Just you. Yeah, because, like, all right, so, example, like, I'm about to go to Africa. Mm-hmm. What, what month are we in? February? Mm-hmm. I'm about to go to Africa in May for uh, literally three weeks, a full three weeks. Okay. You know what I'm saying? And I'm like, damn, yo, like. I always thought about going to Africa. Now I'm really about to go to Africa. Where you, know you going? Saying? Well, I'm going. Um, I'm going to South Africa, West Africa, and uh, East Africa. I'm going. Like, okay, you're gonna, gonna be on an African fun. tour. Yeah, and um, I'm, I'm flying my videographer out there, so I'm like, I can't just go out there by myself. Like, I'm flying my videographer out there. We're gonna document this shit. We're gonna oh, shoot that's lit. Videos. And we about to bring back some content, you know, for the people. Okay, yeah, that's what I was gonna ask. So, yeah. what is what are your plans for while you out there? You performing? Oh, yeah, you making videos? videos? Um, I'm gonna work with some African artists out there. I got oh, my hey. producer who, who been producing for me for the past two years. He's from Johannesburg. So mm-hmm. we bought to link up for the first time at, you know. Okay. International stuff. collabs. We here yeah. for it. That's really, really dope. Um, so talk to me about like, cause first of all, that's that's really big that you're saying that you're about to do literally go to Africa yeah. to collab with African artists. Is this something that you saw for yourself? Like Nah, because it's like it's like as as being as an independent artist. I feel like you could only go as far as, like, you want to go. You know what I'm saying? Because, like, last year I went to Antigua for the first time ever. I went three yeah. times, actually. Mm-hmm. I love Antigua. Antigua. I, I the, love it there. The first time I went, I didn't know a soul. Because I'm I'm a, I'm a, I'm a anti-social type of nigga. You know what I'm saying? Really? And the that's only interesting. person that you really hang, see me hanging with is Jab. Like, that's probably, like, Shout out to Jab. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And if you're around me, it's just, like, temporary. Because I, I like my own space. I like being by myself. I like shopping by myself. I like traveling by myself. I like... Going to the movies by myself, I like doing a lot of shit by myself. Yeah, just so like for me you to for be real. around me, I really gotta fuck with you. Mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying. So I went to Antigua for the first time ever, and um, I linked up with some people. And within the first day, I linked up with them people. I was like, yeah, these these people are gonna be around me, mm-hmm. and they got me onto the radio station. Like I saw that, day. yeah, I saw you know that. I was so, like, whoa. Yeah, so we gonna like, talk about it. I feel like my energy. Is is just like is good enough to really get me to where I want to be at. You know what I'm saying? Okay. I don't need anybody else. Like, you know? so what I was saying though before was like, is this something that you saw in the plan? But it seems like if that's always how your energy was, then you had to have known that you were destined to do. Yeah, of course. I'm something. destined to know I was going like be where I'm at now mm-hmm. and even be bigger. I, I've been through this. Mm-hmm. I'm saying that's why I passed up on them scholarships to play football. You know, because I like music was always. I'm that saying, means like, you I have had Sean Price living in my building. He's the one who gave me my rap name. Yeah, I'm saying please. Don't yeah, because um, me, but... hold on, because I definitely knew like you used to call yourself what Killer Kev. Killer Kev. Then I went from Kev Dollars and stuff like that. Yeah. Like, please only positive energy is Pope. Like mm-hmm. Kev the Pope. Mm-hmm. I'm saying um, I used to roll with Troy Ave and stuff like that. Uh, I used to write for a couple people. I even helped Casanova make his first song. So 
Oh, really? I, I was That's around the right people, you know, for me to have the, like, level of confidence that I have now. I'm like, yo, mm -hmm. ain't nobody stopping me. Like, you could be whatever you want to be. Right. So, so, with all of the people that you're affiliated with and all the things that you've done so far, do you feel like where you are in your career right now measures up to what you've done? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, because everything is, is God's plan. Like, you know, even if I got a plan, God got a bigger plan. And right. Even if I want things to happen now, it ain't going to happen. It's not going to happen on yeah. your timing. Yeah. And I'm so happy that, like, I'm happy that you said that because I don't feel like enough people really understand that concept. Like, things it's don't it, it always. It comes with growth, though. You know what I'm saying? And, like, mm -hmm. how you was brought up. And, like, because I'm from Brownsville. I try to get away from Brownsville as much as I can. Mm -hmm. That's why I travel so much because, like, it ain't really nothing there. It's just... The same niggas I grew up with and I used to sell drugs to. I mean, like, the, the same niggas Allegedly. that I used to buy weed from <laughs> the niggas I'm selling weed to now. Allegedly. Bro, like, you Allegedly. Know what I'm so it's like, mm -hmm. I ain't seeing no difference, bro. Like, I used to look up to you. Now you're looking up to me. Like, bro, like, what's right. going on here? You know what I'm saying? Right. So when, let's say, like, you're super, super big. Are you moving out of New York? Yeah, I'm, I'm, um... I'm pretty much like back by and coastal forth, New York, LA. Yeah, I I knew so you would move there permanently to LA. Yeah, or you would stay by coastal. Um, me honestly, I would move to Connecticut. That's so why? Because it's 50 minutes from New York. Out the way. Wise. Um, would you? I feel like I feel like LA is just like New York with palm trees and is a, is a bigger state. Like, yeah, that's that's all it is. I actually yeah. don't like the New York to LA pipeline, just based on recent, more recent events. I do you feel like because rappers, yeah, rappers don't really yeah, make it out of LA that often. I mean, um, me and my boy Jack always make it out. It, it, I feel like it's just the energy. No, nah, like, knock on wood because no, no knock on wood. Like, no, I'm like, knocking on it. Real talk, like is I feel like is is I'm not a flashy nigga. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? I'm fly as fuck, but I'm not no flashy nigga. I'm a humble dude. You know what I'm saying? I know who to who to be around. I know, you know, my stomp. I know where to be at and stuff. You know, I've been to L.A. enough. Like, in 2020, I've been to L.A., what, 36 times? I heard you say that. And I was you know like, damn. Like, last year, I've been to L.A. Like, you know, so I know where to You know the lay of the land. Yeah. So do you think that a lot of times, like, when situations like that unfold is by way of people not being aware of their surroundings? Yeah, yeah. And and I feel like people be getting too comfortable. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, you may be this type of person, but you're not from there, bro. Like, you know what I'm saying? You mm -hmm. may be around these type of niggas, but you're not from there. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, everything doesn't have, work everywhere. You may have protection from these people, but these niggas can still backdoor you because you're not from there. You know right. what I'm saying? Like, you really got to remember, you're not from there. Right. And you said something also. You said, like, you're a fly, but you're not a flashy nigga. Yeah. Um... Where do you think is the balance? Because I think that in the hip-hop community, especially, like, being flashy, the chains, the clothes, all of that See, is very, I'm, like, sensationalized. No, I'm not a jewelry type of nigga. Because, like, I feel like with jewelry, you don't, you attract the wrong energy with jewelry. Females don't look at jewelry. Niggas look at jewelry. Niggas want to rob you when they see you got jewelry on. Females, that's, a, that's a fact. I'm not going to lie. look at, oh, he dressed nice, or he look good, he got a nice smile. And the thing that, like, what I noticed about females, like, once you get a girl to make eye contact with you, then she took. Once she looks, she took. I like, completely you know disagree. That's how females bag dudes. That's how I completely bag disagree. Come and talk to me once they make that eye contact with you. I completely disagree. I'm very big on eye contact. And yeah. I don't feel like I use it as a device to bag niggas. That's one. Two, um, when it comes to the jewelry, um, I'm not going to lie. I look at a chain. I don't like when it's like a a bunch of them. I feel like that's excessive. But yeah. I look at a nice little nice little so, piece. All right, so you so a nigga with jewelry, you think he got money? Oh no, I definitely niggas be wearing a man's jewelry. You never so, know so, when you so see it. You, but I'm you saying, see a nigga jewelry, like, what do you think of of him? Like, what's, what's I mean, I, it's a little curiosity comes to my mind. Like, hmm, who is this? Um, sometimes you could tell, like, by the piece that they trying to be too flashy. I don't like niggas that's too flashy. Because, because, but I feel like with me, like, when it comes to women, I'm more, I'm more looking at, like, how can you inspire me? You know what I'm saying? I don't look at, like, because. Oh, man. All right. I hear you, but, like, I really hate when people try to make it seem. Nah, nah, nah. Like, appearance isn't a thing. Like, in no, order no, for no, you real to. Talk, like, like, because, because, keep it 100 with you, like. I like I like I like dating older women. 
Okay. You know what I'm saying? Like cougar old or like just older? Cougar, milfs. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? Um, why? Not saying that's, it's wrong, but like why? Just, what about just, it? That's just how, how I grew up on. Like, you okay. know what I'm saying? From, from even high school, I was dating older women. Mm. Like, I was 16 dating somebody that was like 23. Yeah, that's not 22. okay, but I hear you. Know you. So, so, I hear you. I feel like, I'm sorry, but I feel like. We always kind of like gloss over like when men talk about like yeah. how young they were, like uh, fucking think, with women, I think, I think grown women. Kinda, I think that's kind of messed up because if it was the other way, because right it would now, still be fucked up. Uh, I don't think so because I see a lot of younger women dating older guys and, and women praise that type of shit. No, you know what I'm saying? depending like, on the type of woman that you're talking to. That's praise. I personally feel like an older man who's talking to a 16-year-old is not talking to her for anything oh, other than that's, manipulate. That's, that's, just, that's, just, that's just straight out Because you, cause you just 16, said 16. Though? You said 16. I'm going based on what you said. You said 16 and a woman was 23. But, but look at it like this, right? For example, a freshman coming into high school, mm-hmm. dating a senior guy that's like 18. You don't think that's kind of like messed up with a, with a female? It's um, like, like what I'm saying, like as you young, as, when you're younger, it's easy to manipulate you. And that's what you know I was saying? saying. That's literally what I said. I feel like it's for manipulation purposes. I, I was purposes. condoning that though. I was condoning it because you know? didn't know any better. But I, I but I, <laughs> but I say that to say I feel like when it comes to men dating older women, it's always kind of like a yeah. I've been doing this since I was young. Like when I was 16, I was messing with a woman who was X, Y, and Z. And it's like okay, you might have been doing that, but that doesn't make it okay. Like that's yeah. still. Yeah. Very much. It's weird. not okay, but this should have been going on for years. Like I know before we was born. You know what I'm I, saying? Listen, I know our pants was even worse. Oh, I know. So, you know, you I definitely you know. Because shit, don't much. get me started. Because I know even in my family, it's it's a whole yeah. lot of whole lot of back then. But I think that I just say it to say that you know there are people who are watching that yeah. may be like, oh yeah, well maybe it's okay you know that so I'm sixteen. The people that's watching that's going against it, those probably the same people that's doing it. You know what I'm saying? Like, you can't put you can't put shit past nobody nowadays. Cause no. they'll be like, oh, I'm against it, da da da. And those be the same people that be doing it. You know what I'm saying? I don't put shit past Shots nobody. Shots fired. For real? I am definitely talking against it. What you trying to say? No, let me stop. Okay. All right, I hear you. So um, we're gonna change it up a little bit. Um we are celebrating 50 years of hip hop. Like mm-hmm. I said, um, there's been so many big moments, especially with the Grammys that just passed. They yeah. honored a lot of like hip hop legends, um, new and old. Mm-hmm. What are like some of like your top or even like one of your top like hip hop moments that comes to mind? Mm. That's a few. Mm-hmm. That's a few. Um, I'm a big Kanye fan, like Die Hard Kanye fan. Mm-hmm. So um, anything that Kanye does, I feel like that shit is just history, bro. Like it's just historical, bro. Like, this this guy is just like yeah. You know what I'm saying? How you how you feel about Kanye right now? I I, I feel I'm I'm with him. I'm with him. I feel like I feel like once I get a big enough platform and where my name is, you know, where it needs to be at, I'm on the same shit. On the same shit he on. Hell yeah. Wait, yeah. wait across the board, Everything. like the way he handles yeah. his relationships. Because, because what he's saying is right. We're the real Jews. We're we're God's, you know, children. We're real Hebrews. You know, we're like, I'm saying, Mm -hmm. all of that is real stuff. Mm -hmm. I'm saying, they not real Jews. They not the real Jews. Mm -hmm. I'm saying, like, what I'm saying, like, what I'm saying might offend people or whatever, but, bro, we got to hear this. You know what I'm saying? Like, this needs to be heard. This needs to be said. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like a lot of rappers ain't saying this because they attached to those people and they in context with those people. And they don't want to lose it. I'm independent. I yeah. Don't, I don't got nothing. You know, I don't got nothing with those people. Yeah, I was definitely going to say, I feel like a lot of the reason why people tend to stay quiet is because people want yeah. to be as politically and correct as say possible. Something, they coming out the next day and apologizing. So why you even said it in the yeah. first place? You're not standing there. That's what they did world. to, um, what's it called? Who was it, Kyrie? They did it to a lot of people. And he, I don't even think that he really did too much. And they really you know, like. That's, that's why, that's why. I'm not even mad that he left the Nets. Like, mm. you know what I'm saying? Because mm-hmm. I feel like they disrespected him. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, why why are you getting upset for a man, you know, voicing his opinion or his views? And he didn't even really yeah. say nothing about the movie. He just retweeted it. Are you a person that separates an artist from their work? They're an artist from their personal life? It depends. Because if we're talking about R. Kelly, then nah. 
<laughs> I'm actually like I don't want to sound like the wrong way when I say I'm surprised that you say that, but I am surprised that you say that because a lot of people still be riding for Mr. Kelly. Um, I'm not. I'm not, I'm not I'm one not, of them. I'm not, I'm not. I'm not with that. I'm not with that. I'm not one of them. I will. I won't lie. Sometimes I have to catch myself because I forget. Like when the song come on, I'm not with that. Step in the name of love. I might forget, nah, but then I get nah. myself together real quick. Cause, Cause me, I'm I'm big on like. If we not messing with somebody, I'm not messing with them. Like, you, for example, you know, I think it was a, uh, oh, matter of fact, you remember when, when when us black people was going against Gucci? <laughs> the brand? Yeah. Yeah, for the monkey, and, the yeah, monkey shirt. And, and, and us black people still wearing Gucci? Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm one of those people who ain't wearing Gucci. Mm-hmm. I'm saying, you see this whole Balenciaga thing? Yep. I ain't wearing Balenciaga. You know what okay. I'm saying? Like, all this whole... Remember when um Doja Cat said something like that? Doja Cat was Doja one of my Cat, favorite artists at the time. What when it came out Cat. that she was like fraternizing with the white people, right? And doing all I that. haven't listened to Doja Cat since then, and she mm. was one of my favorite artists. See, I'm a little hypocritical when it comes to this kind of concept because um, I think it depends on what the person did. Nah, because it I feel like us black people as a whole, once we say something, I feel like we always trying to. Oh, try to accept people back in. Oh, they invited to the cookout. and they don't be like, accepting us. Y- yeah, if you really want to talk about like, it, so you're absolutely like, right. Not, why are we why are we inviting these people to our cookout? Like they not inviting us to no bar misfits. They sure they not don't inviting us to no. You know, like why why are we why are we condoning they stuff? Like you yeah, know they they really why don't. Why do we feel we need to get an Oscar? Do you know where the Oscar came from? It started from a black man, a black filmmaker. Mm. That's where the Oscar started from. It didn't start from no, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But they appropriated the and make it theirs. Bro, I don't, I don't <laughs> even care to win a Grammy. Don't even get me started on the Grammys because why would they, you know, love to everybody that won a Grammy. Congratulations to everybody. Shout out to everybody. But yeah. Harry Styles winning the Grammy was not oh, in man. my bingo card for the Grammys of 2023. But, but, but we got to we gotta really check it out. Every year, we us black people always get upset about this. Like, how many more How many more times a white person got to win for you to realize, like, yo, you're going to be upset next year, too? We just got to <laughs> understand the world that we're living in and bro, be yo, fucking sorry, for real. We just got to remember, like, yo. We gotta create our own create our own shit. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. BT ain't for us. It's for, it's Viacom now. You know what I'm saying? Like, take that, make it W E T instead mm-hmm. of B E T. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. cause they don't even show music on there no more. It's a bunch of Tyler Perry movies. Like, maybe you could be um the face of the next black platform. Yeah, I will. I Shout will. out to I'm talking to create Town, my own black shit. owned business. You know what I'm saying that's why I'm 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 really about to be on Kanye more. I'm about to create my own everything. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying just for my people. You know I'm saying? I love that for you. Yeah. I love that for you. Okay, so um, let's hop right back into your artistry. Like it. I said before, you have over 1.1 million um views on your YouTube channel. I don't mm-hmm. know if you know that. Yeah. That's really really dope. Um, how do you feel about that? How do you feel about the way that you're received um online? I feel great. Music. I feel great because um. I remember, I remember, I remember me and Jav used to talk about like, you know, certain milestones you want to, you know, hit and like certain things you want to accomplish and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And then now it's like, we accomplishing stuff. We, f- we forgot we even, you know, we had this on the list. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's like, damn, we did this. What word? I didn't even know I got, I didn't even know I had a million views like until you told me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, damn, like where? But. I feel over great. a million, I actually. Feel great. Like for a nigga to go to, like I, I like when I look at my when my music is getting streamed at, I'm like, damn, I'm going there now, you know. Mm-hmm. Like I, I went to Mexico, multiple parts of Mexico, Tulum, Cancun, and stuff like that, where people listening to my music. Okay. I go to Antigua and people. You yo, giving jet setter? You know what I'm saying like, yo, I know your music, right? Mm-hmm. Like people really know my music. Especially coming from Brownsville, going across the world and meeting people who know your music. Right. That That's shit dope. my heart. Like, That's really, really dope. Right. So who how, who would you say is like your, if you have one, like your targeted audience? Uh, I feel like everybody. Okay. Everybody. I don't, I don't put no limit. You know so, what I'm okay. So when it comes to your fans, like who have you noticed like tunes into you more the most? Um, I'll say... From twenty five to like forty, okay. Yeah, that means you talking that real shit. Yeah, I feel like that because those are very the people mature. that started with me. 
when I was like 18, 19 and they're growing with me. Oh, so, that's interesting. Yeah. So you feel like your fan base has stayed pretty much the same from so when you were 18 making music you would say your fan yeah, base was around so 18 as I'm growing as an artist they growing with, with me. you yeah that's dope i think that's very important because there are a lot of artists that start making music and then as time goes on they lose their yeah. fans they either change up their sound or they start doing something different that their fan base doesn't I mean, really fuck with. i, I want to say it's bad to go on like different lanes and try different genres and you know you said good. it is bad no, I, oh not yeah no no, no i agree that's i don't what I'm think doing so. now like mm -hmm. my new record i'm about to put out it's more like an R and B type popish record. Mm -hmm. Oh, you know what I'm saying, yeah. Hmm. I'm trying. I'm like exercising my vocal, like you know, my voice. Okay, let me find out. Yeah. Kev got vocals. Um, you have a video on your YouTube channel for "Ain't a Thing." It says that it's premiering October fifth. Oh yeah, yeah. What's that about? That's a, that's the whole like that's that's being independent. As you like, with me when I shoot videos. I don't just shoot one video. I probably shoot like two of them. Mm -hmm. You know, because like, I'm always prepared. Always prepared. So I, like, you see it on YouTube, but I, I still got like four other videos on my laptop ready to be uploaded. Yeah, I, I was thinking, I'm like, October 5th is so OD. Like, yeah. I feel like. And that's that builds anticipation. That's a lot you know of anticipation. Because an, anything is going to be on the next project that I'm putting out. Okay. In August. So. So how long do you be holding your stuff for? Cause the video, like, there's a thumbnail and everything, which means the video was done, right? Yeah. Yeah. So how long do you hold stuff before you start um, putting it out? When the pro I, like, see, I work. I I'm not signed to a label because I got my own label, but okay. I work like a label. So before a label put out an artist or put out, you know, push an artist, mm -hmm. they they. They start preparing, you know, they shoot videos, they have press runs lined up and stuff lined up. Mm -hmm. So I have all of that stuff lined up. So when I'm ready to release, it's just like it's ready to go. Yeah. It's okay. Go. Interesting. So something else that you um have on your YouTube is your I believe it's your latest song with Shot of Spence. Yeah, Shot of Spence. Shot of Spence. Uh set the tone. Set the tone, yeah. I I like it. The visuals is good. The songs yeah. is good. Yeah, we went to uh so that's crazy because I was in Antigua. Mm -hmm. Right, and Spence was like, I told, I, I was trying to get Spence to come out to LA because I shoot all my videos in LA with mm -hmm. my videographer out there. Mm -hmm. And he was like, damn, so I can't get out there; it's gonna be too busy. So I'm like, how can we shoot this video? Can you come to Antigua or something like that? Mm -hmm. He's like, nah, man, come to Miami. So I was already in Antigua for my stay because I was staying out there for a whole month. Mm -hmm. So I booked the flight, went to uh, Miami. And then went back to Antigua. Wow. So I just went to Miami just to shoot the video. First of all, I think it's so crazy that you said the first time that you went to Antigua, you didn't know anybody. And no, then you went from anybody. not knowing anybody to staying there for a whole month. I yeah, and ended up going back three times after that. That's crazy. Two, two more times after this. So, I went so you really days. love it there. I love it there yeah. too. But like, that's really like, yeah. that's dope. And I could tell they really fuck with you just based on the stuff that yeah, I've seen and that the you post too. was fire, bro. Like, I was in, I played. See, I haven't. Oh, you played, man? Of course. I'm a oh, West Indian. Yeah, well, yeah. So wait, so that wasn't your first time? First time playing carnival? Yeah. No, I wasn't. Have you been doing it since you was young? Yeah, like Kitty Carnival yeah? and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, I haven't played Mass. Yeah. Um, I want to try. I And the only like carnival outside of the United States that I've been to so far is Caravana in Canada. Oh, I haven't yeah. experienced haven't a Canada Caribbean yet. carnival yet. So yeah, definitely Antigua looking forward. There's one you shouldn't miss, like. Really? I'm going to be out there this year again. Okay. Yeah. See, I haven't been out there for carnival. I've been out there um, when I was younger, but not for carnival. So yeah. I might, that might it be has, on my It has uh, the most beaches, list. Yeah, I know. Beaches. It's beautiful. Oh, I got I got stories, but yeah. it's not about me. Um, So you did that collab with Shada. You also, as you said, um, you're affiliated with Troy Ave. Yeah. Well, we, I'm not affiliated with Troy Ave no more. Oh. <laughs> no, 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 I'm not. I'm I'm just straight up Kev the Pope East ninety eight music like that's me. You not affiliated as in like y'all don't fuck with each other no more or um, you, like I haven't, I haven't spoke just... to Troy Ave in like a couple years mm. and the way we stopped speaking was um all right so I told you I, I used to work with Casanova like I, you know I, I helped him with his first record mm -hmm. I went to his listening party in mm -hmm. uh, Brooklyn Tom Dixon Harry when he had the Don't Run record they were mm -hmm. steaming and stuff I went there we took a picture and. You know, he didn't like that because I guess yeah. they was beefing at the time or whatever. So Politics. he was like, ah, you know, mm -hmm. we ain't cool no more. And I was like, all right, cool. How do you feel about that, though? Like, I feel like in this industry, a lot of people are, you know, it's very easy to bump shoulders with a lot of people in the industry. 
So how do you feel about like niggas that you don't fuck with, fucking with niggas that you fuck with, um, and all that within the industry? See, I, I don't feel I don't feel no type of way because I don't really roll with too much people. Mm-hmm. So I don't got to worry about the people that I fuck with fucking with people I don't fuck with. Okay. And I'm a very likable person. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm a very likable person. So, yeah, know, ain't, ain't nobody that don't really fuck with me. Because, you know, like, now there's people who won't do songs with with certain people just based oh, on. No, you I'm, took a I'm, picture. I'm, and I'm, I'm not like that. I'm it, not like that. Okay. No. Um, so, with, I guess, following that, um. You are also in New York City, which is Troy Ave's movie. Yeah. Um, <laughs> word, word. Um, how was that experience? Like, you about to get into your acting um, bag? It was cool. You know, it was cool. But we actually shot that movie in 2016. And it just released. It recently. just released, yeah. So I kind of forgot about that whole movie. I forgot about <laughs> it. Like, for real, for real. Because I was like, hmm, like, I'm hearing what you're saying, but I'm like, the movie. When I was like, watching the movie, the movie, I had to wait to the end credits to see the to, to see who I was playing, because I forgot the character I was playing in the movie. Damn, it was that long. Yeah, it was that long ago. Mm. Word. So what you think? Like, uh, would you take up acting? Did you like hell the yeah, experience? Yeah. Because after that, I, did, I was in a couple of uh, web series and stuff like that after. And now... I watch a lot of movies on Tubi. <laughs> like, I'm not going to lie. Tubi yo, be having a good movie. People make a fun of Tubi and stuff like that, but it inspired me. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. you know, like, not even just in women. Just anything in general. It mm-hmm. has to inspire me. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So, right now, I'm really, like, I've been on the phone with my videographer, like, yo, like, you know what I'm saying? The bag That's is there. Like, let's, let's start making a movie. Let's shoot a movie. Like, That's what I was about to say. From an yeah. actor standpoint or from, like, you trying to get nah, in your I'm director, really, producer? Nah, nah, I'm really trying to, because, like, once, once the music is where I want to be at and it's all said and done, because I don't want to be 35, 40 making music. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? So I want to really, like, get into the behind the scenes and directing stuff. You know what I'm saying? Because not just movies. I want to direct, you know, commercials and, you know, TV shows and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And even, like, you might you might laugh, but I want to direct porn. You know what I'm saying? Because it's a billion-dollar business. See? Billion-dollar company. And people just... And the thing about me, like... <laughs> You ever you ever watch porn and you just gotta keep going to like page two, page three, page four just to find out what you want to see? A good one, yeah. Right. So I'm a type of nigga, yo. I'm gonna make shit that people want to see. It's just <laughs> like I know it sounds different. You never heard of before. I mean, That's like, me. no, I definitely I hear you. I understand where you're coming from. I think that for me, it's just like, how do you separate? your craft, like, I guess, as with your director hat, Mm -hmm. like, you are now, like, setting this up from a different standpoint than you would usually as a consumer. So I think that's why, like, I laugh because it's like, I'm just picturing you like, all right, well, arch your back a little bit more. All right. (laughs) All right. And trying to get, like, trying to get the angles and stuff. Like, I just think that's (laughs) so crazy. But I hope that you do, if you do it, I hope you do it well. I I will. I will. Um, Good luck with that. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, so um you also really you released a few um different videos over the course of the last couple of years. Mm-hmm. Um, I wanna ask you about how you go about selecting the girls that's in your videos. Um Do you I, I, do you choose them? Yeah, yeah. I, I do everything. I do everything. Okay, because I feel like um there's a lack of representation in the girls that are really? in your videos, yeah. As, as which, which video? Which video is this? Have you seen? I've seen like at Cause. least like your your last few different ones. There um, was one. I think it might have been Heart Froze, and it was like a bluish pinkish light. Is that the one that had a bluish pinkish light? And it was a main girl, and I couldn't tell like what it was given, but yeah, it was a lot of light skin. And I and this is not me saying anything ab- to you specifically. Yeah. It's to a bigger point because I think that a lot of times we get into conversations uh, about colorism mm-hmm. in the industry. And I wanted to ask you to see if it was intentional. Cause sometimes nah. I really don't think. Cause, cause, uh, I, I, don't, I, don't, I, I can't agree on that because, um, come up my video, come up. I think we had like six different models in there. Mm-hmm. And, um, four of those models were like, you know, same skin tone as yours. My video heart froze. So these same skin tone as yours. Yeah. The video I'm about to drop, um, you said it's love. She's a little darker than you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Okay. This is not me trying to, like, put you on the spot or anything. But so I... You saying I should, like, 
put, you know, Caucasian females in my video or something. I like am that. not saying that. Not that there's anything against it, but I, I think I've that, that before too. But man. I think that like my skin tone isn't really like like I feel like you can always bro, I love dark skin representation. Um, yeah. especially like coming from but see, artists. See, I, I think I I I'm I I'm not a type of dude see for me I don't look at skin tone because we're all human at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. And I feel like when you say dark skin, light skin, brown skin, whatever, that's just to keep us segregated. And it's not, but that's, that's why saying, I asked and you. That's just to keep us like, oh, I don't fuck with you because you light skin or you dark, like, what? But that's why I asked you because yeah. it's very easy to draw up a narrative of, I don't see a lot of representation in your music videos, yeah. so this is something that you're doing on so, purpose. So that's the reason why I asked you, yeah, yeah. is it intentional nah, and are nah, you the one that... Nah, it's not. Selects the people for your videos. So this is not me coming for you at all. Nah, I'm, I'm really asking you nah, out of I'm curiosity. Not I'm not feeling Okay, cool. Just making sure. Because at the end of the day, it's art. You know, it's like how, however you take it. You know what I'm saying? And it's not to say I took it anyway. It was something that I observed, and yeah. I know that it's an ongoing conversation. So as somebody who I mean, is in the seat. You got to look at it like we all got mouths, right? Mm -hmm. and, and what are our mouths are meant to do? Talk, eat. So that's what people going to do. People always going to talk. <laughs> people always going to talk. And I'm going to just keep, you know, uh -huh. keep letting them talk. If they're not talking, you ain't doing nothing. Right. You know what I'm and, saying? And this is not to say people are talking. I don't know if people are talking. I, I would love people to talk. I just I, wanted to I ask you. I would love people to talk. Because, you know, when you, once people talking, you lit. Okay. I hear that. <laughs> so um, you said um, in one of your interviews that as an artist, you have to put in footwork Instead of just relying on like the digitals and yeah, the socials, of course, because the streets are still hit. Mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying like, um, yeah, you may get the internet lit or whatever, mm -hmm. but when it's time to do them shows, is people really going to show up? Right. You know what I'm saying when they hear your record, can they put a face to the record? Right. So how do you go about getting that footwork and making sure that you're represented um, outside of the digital? Like with this new record, you said is love. Um, billboards is going to be out, you know, mm -hmm. billboards and Times Square and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, flyers and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Stickers on the train with the QR codes. Okay. So like I'm promotion, saying, marketing, yeah. Yeah, all that kind of stuff. You got to hit the streets. Like you, you got to hit the streets. The streets still, still there. What about like in-person performances? You perform yeah. a lot? Hell yeah. You like it? Of course I do. <laughs> I love interact. Like, even though I'm an in anti-social type of dude, mm -hmm. when I'm performing, I'm interacting with the people. I'm more social. Like you'll you'll get me to talk, you'll get me to smile and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Like um, like one of the shows that uh I do every year is at Rutgers University. Mm -hmm. That's like one of the biggest shows I usually do every year. And bro, when we when when me and Jab get yeah, on the Jab stage, was talking about it's like, that. Is is this record that me and Jab got? We put out. I think in 2017, 2018, called Where Were You? Mm -hmm. Last year, when we performed that song, he could vouch for me, too, and people that was there. These motherfuckers had their phones out. They was repeating the words. Everything. Oh, I, I love that. Like, Yo, this song came out five years ago. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And it was lit. So is that one of those moments where you like, damn, like, we really doing yeah. this shit? Like, yeah. I can imagine. Not, it's, not, it's not like, yeah, we really doing it. It's like, yo. People really fucking with it. People really fucking with it. And, yo, it, this was meant like this is what all the hard work and trial and tribulations is for like you mm -hmm. know what i'm saying this this is what comes with it mm -hmm. do you have like a? I guess we kind of touched on this already because you want to get into your directing you want to expand your brand outside of music yeah um how how what's in your like if you had to come up with like a five-year plan or something that you see yourself doing five years from now what would it be um Cause you say you didn't want to make make music when you're 35 or 40. I don't know how old you are right now, so I'm, I don't I'm, know if I'm that's 27. I'll be 28. In a okay. Months. Yeah. So that's that. The five years is coming close to that. So how so how do you plan on like wrapping up the um, music chapter and tapping? No, I'm, into I'm gonna continue to make music, but just not as often and consistent as I am now. Mm. Um, I will be like more behind the scenes, I'll be helping other artists. Like, cause I, I want to sign some artists too, cause I'm my own label. Mm -hmm. I want to sign some artists and, um, sign some producers. Okay. You know, um, Java's like, Java's my bro. So mm -hmm. I want to help him as much as I can. You okay. Know what I'm so let's talk about that real quick. Um, as somebody who's looking to sign artists and producers, what's yeah. something that you would look for in an artist or a producer that you sign? Um, 
you got to be like serious about it. You know what I'm saying? Like you can't be threatening in the fence. You can't be like, yo, I'm in the streets and making music. Mm -hmm. If you making music, like you got to be making Dedicated music. Dedicated to that bro, shit. Like, you know what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. that's how a lot of rappers get killed. You know, they making music, but they still want to be in the streets. Like you can't, you yeah. got to pick one. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Or like, you got to like. Dang, that's. Okay, so that I think that also kind of limits the kind of people that you're looking for too, because not everybody's yeah. gonna just be willing to just yeah. give that up. Not because they don't want to, but sometimes they just. Nah, you know, I mean, it's, why it's wouldn't a little you want to give it up? The only thing you gain from the streets is death or jail. Like, why wouldn't you want to get that? Up? I think that's coming from a mature mindset. Yes, I mean it's, it shouldn't even come from like it's just common sense. I feel like you know. I think, but you know what they say about common sense? Yeah, it ain't very common. It's not. And I feel like, reason why I feel like I'm so passionate and so, like, so serious about my music, because growing up in Brownsville, I seen certain things that I wasn't even supposed to see at a young age. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, I seen somebody get robbed at gunpoint at seven years old. Mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Like, I seen, you know, abuse at a very young age. That's why I, that's why I don't drink. I never drank a day in my life before. Never drank oh, yeah, alcohol. I, that in here too. I, I, you know I was saying? wondering. So that, oh. like, just little things, you know, that just traumatized me forever, just make me you know, the stronger and, you know, the person I am now, like, I ain't, I ain't for that. I ain't doing that. And I hate seeing people get taken advantage of. Mm -hmm. So if I'm signing an artist, you got to just, like, you got to have some type of knowledge and brains of, like, what you're getting into. Like, mm -hmm. you know, this is a business. You know what I'm saying? And I think that it's important to have people who have that experience and understanding yeah. of, like, just how things are and have real-life situations that have shaped who they are now. Yeah. Um, because some people lack that life experience, so you can't really pour into people when you don't have much yeah. um, to do. To, you don't have much to take it from, I guess. So I think that that also goes to the point of, you may really be the right person for this. Yeah. Um, so something else that we didn't touch on yet is that you're walking in the LA Fashion Week. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Aren't yeah. you? Um, yeah, I actually, I actually uh, postponed that. Oh, okay. yeah! I'm actually gonna um walk in New York Fashion Week. That okay? So perfect because I was gonna ask you because yeah. New York Fashion Week obviously is here. Yeah. Um, what are you walking in? What you what you doing? Um, I don't want to reveal that as yet. Okay. I'm a. I'm a well, I mean, realistically speaking, um, I'm, I'm I'm walking with the model experience and for the LA Fashion Week. Okay. I'm gonna be doing that, but New York, I'm not sure as yet. We haven't figured that out as yet. Mm, I know that they've started like doing casting calls and stuff yeah. like that. I'm really looking forward to seeing like the looks. I know a lot of people are gonna be popping yeah. out in New York. I love when people come to New York and dress how they yeah. think. Like, but not to cut you off though. Shout out, uh, shout out my cousin. He has a brand called Saad USA. He's okay, come up. I'm saying I don't have it on right now, but you know, shout out him and shout out Plug Royalty, my bro up in Rhode Island. I'm wearing the. Uh, you know, on the older design, I'm wearing his, his sweater right <laughs> here and stuff like that. Shout out to him. All right. Shout yeah. out to him. Um, You definitely be showing love. Of course. Um, you show love to the community. I know you do, like... Turkey drives. Yep. Back to school drives. All of that. Why not? What's the importance of that to you? Um, Nobody comes back to Browns and do it. So, why shouldn't I do it? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm, I know how to make money. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, the money that I'm making, why not? you know, put it towards something good that could help the people out. You know what I'm saying? Because growing up, you know, I may I may have been, I'm, you know, fortunate to have, you know, a no face and stuff like that and, you know, nicest clothes and stuff. Mm -hmm. But there's some people who don't got that, you know, ain't fortunate enough to get to have that. Right. So, you know, I'll be the extra help, you know. I think that's very commendable. Yeah. Um, because a lot of people definitely use the money that they get for the flashy stuff and yeah. I mean, a lot of times. I mean, wrong with that, you know what I'm saying? But you got to No, be I don't balance. think, that's exactly what I was about to say. Yeah. I don't think that there's anything wrong, but I think that there should also be something to show for it. Not to say anybody's entitled to the money that these artists are making, yeah. but even if it's like investing money, I having mean, property, something gotta, like. Like, a lot of the, the money that these artists is making, though, it's not even their money. Like, hmm. yeah, you see, a, you see an artist sign for such and such, mm. but. They gotta they gotta recoup that money and pay that label back. I'm yeah, saying, it's just an investment. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but that's that goes for a certain category. Though that goes for the signed ones, but there yeah. are also independent ones that make yeah, money and still don't really be doing shit with it. So, um, but that's neither here nor there. Yeah. Um, so you said something interesting in roll with me. You said I stick around even when you fart or something <laughs> like that. 
I thought that was real. I thought that was real crazy. Um, That's love right there. That's love right there. Yeah, like, how, so you were, you were getting real comfortable with the yeah, ladies. because, like, even though, all right, um, I'm, a, I'm a hopeless romantic type of dude. You know mm. what I'm saying? I love to love. I like I like nice stuff. I like treating women, you know, nice and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I like, with me, I like giving people an experience they never had before. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So anybody who ever met me, they would never forget me. Even, like, exes from, like, you know, years ago. They still contact me. Like, yo, remember the da-da-da? Like, because you gave them an experience they never had before. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like that's what a lot of, like, men lack nowadays. They mm -hmm. just want to, oh, I'm trying to fuck or such and such. Like, bro, they ex you want, you like, if you get a shorty who's comfortable with you, mm -hmm. she'll do anything for you, bro. Like, you know what I'm saying? So what's the most memorable thing you did for somebody that you was dating? It, it's not even somebody I was dating. Um, So... What were we in, 2023? Mm hmm 2021. Um, I had a homegirl, you know, that we, was we used to kick it back in the days or whatever. And, you know, we reconnected. She she lived in the A. Mm -hmm. And we reconnected. And I'm like, yo, I ain't seen you in a minute. You know, let's link up. She's like, all right, let's link up. I'm like, let's go to Mexico. What? I, it just ran. I'm like, yo, She got go flew out to Mexico? No, nah, no, nah, listen to the story. I was like, oh, let's okay, go to Mexico, me. right? Mm hmm So, you know, as a time reached to go to Mexico, a week before, she had hit me. She was like, yo, Kev, I got some bad news to tell you. I'm like, what's up? She's like, yo, I'm at the passport place right now, and they told me they can't expedite my passport. I'm like, what? She didn't have a passport. I'm like, yo, I booked this flight the day we started back talking, which was two months ago. You had time to go to the post office. You had time to Damn. do all this to get your passport. Right. Why would you wait a week before we supposed to leave? Yo, so, get your passport. Right? Stay ready so you don't got to get so, ready, bro. So listen to this, right? Mm -hmm. So I was like, yo, you ain't going to spoil the trip. You feel me? You can cancel. I'm going to cancel your flight or whatever. You know, let the money go down the drain because it's money. You, you'll, you'll get it back. Right? Money's easy to make, but it's hard to keep. Right? So I'm like, fuck it. So, you know, I'm, I'm talking with my moms and my mom's like, yo, you really going to go to Mexico by yourself? I know you go everywhere by yourself, but Mexico though. So my mom was like, ask one of your friends. I was like, bro, none of my friends got passports. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So this is what I did. I threw up a random post on Instagram. I was like, yo, what? Like what? So my DM was filled, filled. I can imagine. Everybody want to get so food out. I messaged the person. I'm, the last person that DM me or whatever, I messaged her. Right? She could, she could, she could, if she could. She could vouch for this. Yeah. I don't, I, I, I'm going to say her name. My name is Drama Queen. She a rapper too. She she makes music. She's from the BX. Okay. Right? And, um, you know, uh, I was like, yo, you, you really trying to go to Mexico? She's like, yeah. So um, she kind of turned me off in the beginning though because she lied about her age. Mm. You know, females is is like to lie about the age. I, I had to I had to learn that. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? But I'm like, what's the point of lying about your age? I was gonna know anyway. You was gonna like, your flight. Yeah, for the flight. For yeah, the flight. Lie like she wasn't legal or just lied, bro. Shorty was 33 and she told me he was 27. I'm like, ain't nothing wrong with being that's, 33. But I feel like that's not even ever. Mm, like, why why lie about that? You know what I'm saying? So I flew. She her wanted out to still be at her late 20s. I flew her out. She, you know, she never been flewed out before. Uh -huh. So I'm like, you never been flewed out before. Like this is regular. You know, I you fly girls out on time. You know, so it's like I, well, I never had this before. I'm like, all right. So you know, first time for everything. You know. Mm -hmm. So when we got to Mexico and she and she seen where we were staying at, she was like, "Yo, who are you? Like, what, like how did you just randomly, you know, just want to fly me out? Because we stayed in this big ass villa in, in Cancun." Mm -hmm. And she was just like, yo, like, who the fuck are you? Like, why are you, why are you just randomly flying girls out and stuff? Like, where your, what kind of money nah, you Nah, like, yeah. Do you, do? I, I, you don't just rap. Like, you got to do something, son. Yeah, you doing like, something on the side. You know, and she had a great time. But the thing what I told her, I'm like, yo, this is just a trip. You know what I'm saying? Don't think anything is coming. We ain't having sex. Ain't nothing coming See, from you. We just I, going yo, for the experience. I swear, I, like, not to say I was waiting for you to finish, but I was see, I wanted to see if you was going to say something about that because that's also a conversation that is had a lot of time. Like, so, does being flewed out nah, entitled I'm not, nah, nigga I, I'm not. I'm not entitled to smash, no. Good. We just, we just going for the experience, the vibe. Like, you never been to Mexico. I've never been to Mexico. First time. I think I'm these saying? niggas need to take notes like, because they, they get real so entitled they, uh, when it comes to trips. Yacht. So they never been on a yacht. We in the middle of the fucking ocean. You know, she's like, it's all about the experience, memories and stuff like that because, you know, like, yeah, you smash, but 
Yeah, you know how, how many other people smashed before? I mean, before you. I'm saying ain't nothing special about that. Yeah. I guess niggas, like a lot, I think it's it's like, the money. Like niggas feel like since also, they're see, putting out me, something. Like, I'm I'm, I'm kind of older now, so if there's no connection, I don't really care to smash. Mm. I'm saying because I don't just have regular sex. Like I'm a, I'm a freaky ass nigga. I'm a, you feel me? So you got you got to have some type of connection, you know, with a girl's body to really, you know. Right. But then you be flying random girls out, though. For the experience, bro. Like, I, but for, you can't you know travel with everybody. The same way you can't be fucking right, on everybody, so you can't, you can't travel, travel with everybody. With everybody. I, I, so... If but, shit ain't working out, I just go book a hotel somewhere else. You can stay in this spot. Go need my own space. That's bro. very respectful. I'm not. That's going, very respectful. I'm, bro, see, I'm because niggas nigga really like, be. I need my own space. So if I ain't feeling you, you like the spot. You stay here. I go. I go somewhere else. Like simple. I ain't going. Big money yeah. popping everywhere. It's not, it's not that's what it's money. giving. It's not, it's not, <laughs> that's what it's giving. It's not big money. It's just about. I feel like peace, bro. I'm. I'm. I'm you know, I like peace more than anything. You know what I'm saying? Because money don't bring you happiness. Like, you can have money, all the money in the world, and you can be unhappy as a motherfucker. Absolutely, but um, peace does not buy a new hotel room. So that's why I'm saying, like, yeah. it gives big money because, like, you <laughs> letting her stay where you book. You finding your own other spot. And, yeah, which, you know. Well, I'm going to stay. Well, I'm going to stay. Well, no, I think that, like, some niggas unhappy. really be mad grimy. Like, okay, well, then you can get out. And, and, and that's and why I said that's real street, respectful. No yo, these niggas be the ruthless state. out here. I'm telling you. Dad, I, yo. I've heard stories. That's why I really don't be like, I'm not really with the whole flute out antics, especially if it's not somebody that I'm already like heavily talking to or in a relationship with. Because I just can't trust these niggas. No, it's, it's not even a flute out thing. Because like when I travel places by myself, I end up meeting people there. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like I went to Miami. The first time I ever went to Miami was like 2016. The first day I went out there, I met a shorty by the bus stop who lives in Orlando because she was coming to Miami to find a... She was moving to Miami, so she was going to the strip to find a job, mm. right? I met her at the bus stop, and that first day, she stayed with me the entire 10 days I was in Miami. Oh, wow. Just just from that one, you know, meeting at the bus stop. No plans, just vibes. Even Oh, even I when I went to y Mexico, the shorty I flew out, she missed her flight the first day. I met a shorty who's, who's from D.C. Mm -hmm. that night. When she when she missed her fight, mm -hmm. we, we kicked it. Like you know, what I'm saying like, <laughs> so you meet people. Like you know, I'm I'm a likable person, so I'm gonna meet people regardless. Okay. Yeah. You really a people person. Kept the Pope for the people. Please only positive energy. That's what I give. It seemed like you live up to your name. So, um, is there anything else? I know we have to wrap up, but is there anything else that you would like to cover, talk on um, before we wrap up? New single coming out. You said his love. Mm -hmm. uh, new project coming to that. end of the summer. Uh, love heartbreaks and melodies. Are you already working on that? It's already done. It's already yo. You really done. be just keeping stuff in the stash. Yeah. So what does that? What real quick? What does that vibe give? R and B and pop. Do That's you think that it's like a summer project? Because I feel like in the summer, like uh, we like we like, love a good summer like you jam. Really can't, you really can't just say. This song is for the summer. It, my song is for... Oh, no, yeah. that's not what I'm saying. But I'm saying, like, does it give summer vibe? Yeah, example. Yeah. Okay. Because yeah. I was going to say, like, example, Bryson. When he dropped Outside after yeah. the summertime, I was very disappointed because I still listen to the song. Yeah. But it's one of those, like, it's, it gives, like, a summer vibe. So that's yeah. why I was saying, like, do we get any of that in a project, especially yeah. since you're dropping um, it at the end of the summer? Me and Jav got a collab project coming soon. A collab, um, project. Yeah, a collab project? Oh, love that for y'all. that for a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, therapy session jab project is out. You know yes, what I'm that's out. go stream that. Um, yeah, that's, that's what okay. Really. You doing your thing? Well, I appreciate yeah. you for coming. Looking forward to the things you got coming for us this year. Um, shout out your social so that the people know where oh, to find um, you. Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, everything is the same. K e v t h e p o p e. Kevin uh -huh. Pope, that's my name. All the old platforms, stream platforms, same thing. Kevin Pope. All right, make sure y'all yeah. stream that. Well, well. And we are out, y'all. Thank you for tuning in.